How do comprehensions in Elixir work, and do we even need them? Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, I'm just doing a quick tip on how comprehensions work. First, let's answer that second question. You don't ever need to use comprehensions. You can do anything you would do with them with enumerables, but it can be a lot easier. Let's take a look at this dice enum function I've got. There's an enum.map that maps over the range of one to six, and then inside of it is another one that maps over the range of one to six, and it outputs tuples. This is basically just doing a die roll with two dice. So let me run the function here, and you can see how it works. So we get a list of lists that contain all the combinations. We probably don't want a list of lists. The reason we have that is because there's a map inside of a map. Let's add list.flatten here just to get that down to a single list. We'll recompile and run it again. Okay, so we've got our list of all the combinations of die rolls. Let's rewrite it using comprehensions. So we'll call this version, version of the function just dice, and then we'll use a four, which is how you start a comprehension. Name of the variable, we'll keep the same name we had before, a backward arrow, and then whatever you're going to generate it from. That'll be one through six, the range. Then second, and same thing, give it another generator. And what this will do is this will create all the combinations of both variables. So it's essentially going to do the same thing as an enum.map inside an enum.map, although actually an enum.map inside of an enum.map will also generate a list of lists. This won't. It'll put them all in a single list. We'll do and first, second. That's it. So it's just one line, dramatically shorter than the code you see here. And I would argue this is also a bit clearer. It's very easy to see what it's doing. Let's recompile and we'll run our new version. It does the exact same thing. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated one, the chords enum. So this is generating a set of X, Y, and Z coordinates, or it's a set of, a list of sets of X, Y, Z coordinates, I should say. And it's got to flatten just like above for the same reasons. And we've also got a filter here so that we're only getting the coordinates where two of the three are a zero and the other one is either a one or a negative one. Let's take a look at how that works. So comprehensions.chordsenum. And you can see here is our set of six coordinates. Now, in order to rewrite this with a list comprehension, all we need to do is make a new function and we'll call this one chords and we'll do the same thing we did before for then the first variable backward arrow and then whatever we're generating from so that's the list of negative one zero and one which of course is the same thing as the range negative one to one we can write it either way i think uh, I would probably go with the first way, but that's fine. Z, and that's going to be the same range, negative 1 to 1. I'll just keep it negative 1 to 1 for consistency with what's above. And then do X, Y, and Z. This will generate all of them. It's not going to do the filtering, but we'll get to that in a second. So chords enum. You can see chords gets all of them. Now, in order to do the filter, it's surprisingly simple. We can just use the same kind of a quality test we did inside the enum.filter and add it in as another term. It's going to be a little bit long, though, so we'll put it on a second line. So it's going to be x times x plus y times y time plus z times z equals one and that's all we needed let's recompile and run our function gets the same input as before and i think in terms of readability and simplicity this is even a bigger win than it was with the dice finally let's take a look at this animal colors function 
I don't have an enum version of it. We're just going to look at this comprehension I've already written. So we have a list of strings, two lists of strings. One is for animals, one is for colors. And we generate all the combinations of animals and colors. And then we add two conditions. The first condition here uses a tuple, so we can compare the color and the animal at the same time. And we don't accept it if it's a black swan. And then another condition says that either the animal is not rhino or the color is gray. In other words, if the animal is a rhino, it's going to be gray. And then we output the result, same as we had done before. Let's we don't even need to recompile. Let's just run animal colors. And you can see we have white horse, gray horse, black horse, white swan, gray swan, no black swan, and then gray rhino, and no other colors of rhinos. This doesn't have to be a tuple. We can actually return whatever format we want. We can type into and then specify what kind of structure we want this to go into. So, for example, we could use an empty map, and then, instead of a list of tuples, we'll get of maps, where the one on the left side maps to the value of the second thing. So here the colors are the keys, and the animals are the values. And since maps can't have duplicated keys, we only have three items total. We have some other options, too. Basically, anything that uses the collectible protocol can be used after into. And if you're not familiar with that, check out my video on protocols if you don't know what they are. And if you want to know about collectible, just Google it and you'll find the Elixir docs. You'll see exactly what functions you need to implement in order to use this with your own structs. So we're going to use uh, strings here or binaries and we can't put tuples into a binary, but we can put binaries into a binary. So we'll do, uh, let's see, we'll do the color and the animal. And then after that, we'll add a new line. So this will just put all of them into a single string instead of multiple tuples like that. So you can see now we've got the entire list. We can do an io.puts and we get a nice output like this. If you learned something from this Elixir tip, then go to my newsletter, type in your name, your email, and join. I'll send you summaries with links to my newest tutorials, articles, interviews, and projects. Of course, you can unsubscribe at any time.